any time you get a high fever virus, okay, or again, bacterial infection, there is a ma- there is a big stress in the body, okay? When that happens, the body, not everybody's, okay, not everybody, right? Not everybody who got COVID has hair loss. The body begins to shift into a repair phase, a slowing phase, and a telogen phase. So it's not putting its resources towards that antigen phase. So a high stress or high fever can actually kick the body into that telogen phase more rapidly than it was supposed to. So that means you are changing essentially the epigenetic expression, if we want to use that for a term, of the hair growth because of of an environmental factor, which was a virus that caused a fever, because that is your body's response to trying to kill a virus by raising body temperature to kill the virus that way uh, through a thermogenic-based effect, as well as being able to speed up the circulation or flow of white blood cells through the body to kill the virus itself. So this is actually a normal process. Uh, It's happened before. Anytime that you get a high fever, doesn't mean for everybody, but a month or two months later, that can start the hair loss. So it's not actually within weeks necessarily of getting COVID. It's typically a month earliest to two months after. And this is called, so there's a medical name for this called telogen effluvium. And telogen effluvium effluvium, is essentially not hair loss, but hair shedding. So this means that two to three months after having a fever or harsh illness, or believe it or not, really stressful events that can do it too, the hair will begin to fall out. Now, this shedding, again, like I said, can last anywhere when it, when it does not happen naturally from five to nine months, so quite a long period of time. The problem is that many people that I know and have spoken with don't have enough hair on the head to go through losing not 50 to 100 hairs a day, but hundreds of hairs a day for three, five, nine months. At that time, they would have lost a lot of hair. I mean, if we just start to like do the math, they could lose 2,000 hairs easily in a month, right? They could easily lose 500 hairs in a week, 2,000 a month for five months. Uh, what, what is that? 10,000 hairs. That's a lot of hair to lose on the head. And so that's why a lot of people are actually seeing these visibly uh, noticeable results from the hair loss. And uh, and uh, again, I've, I've really made the commitment on this show to always be honest and truthful with you. And when I, uh, I got the virus back in uh, October, early October, and uh, I was sick for about three to four days, uh, f- again, followed my protocols. I'm not going to talk about that today. And, um, and it was good to go. You know, again, like I was sick. It wasn't fun. I didn't enjoy it. I don't wish it on anyone. I had one of the two first uh, more virulent based strains. And, and, you know, after two weeks, essentially, I was back to the gym. Everything was normal. I was bad for a week, uh, three to four days bad took it easy for a week, eased into life that second week. I still worked the whole time. I still, you know, had to take care of my family, all those things. But, um, you know, again, it was not enjoyable, but I had a fever, but it was not a high fever, but it was definitely a fever. And so when I look at that, I say, okay. And then I started to lose clumps of hair, like clumps of hair. And I said, what is going on right now? And and I just didn't dawn on me that it had anything to do because it would have been six weeks prior to me having a fever, which I, again, I don't get a lot of fevers. I got, I got a fever. Uh, I talked about this in, I can't remember exactly right now. Uh, I apologize, but it was somewhere around like maybe February or so January, February of uh, 2020. And I hadn't had a fever before that for a long period of time. And I know that might sound strange. Uh, but anyway, what I wanted to share with you is this, is that I was shedding massive amounts of hair. I would shampoo my hair and there would just be clumps of hair in my hand. I would comb my hair even after the shower where hopefully the hair fell out. No, then hair would be falling on my shoulders and this had never really happened before. So I said, okay, you know, let's figure out what's going on here. Why is this happening? What are the new things that I did with my diet, my nutrition, uh, supplementation, different exercise, like what was new? And I had to look at that. I'm looking at it. I'm like, okay, well, I'll change this variable, change this variable. Didn't seem to do anything. Still losing hair. Okay, let me figure this out. Let me go back. What was different? What changed? Okay, yes, virus, fever, hair loss, 
uh, this now makes sense. So this leads me to the next step. I, again, I'm, I'm definitely a male that would be more prone to losing my hair. There's no doubt about it. Like in my family, uh, my dad's side, my mom's side, guys lose their hair. So I think I have to work a little bit harder to keep my hair because uh, left to its own uh, devices, as they say, I would I would lose my hair, no doubt about it. So I said, well, you know, again, I, I'm not going to get into hair loss versus non-hair loss, good, bad, anything like that. It Honestly, it, none of that matters. And, and I, I'm, <laughs> I just want to say this, like, I'm good either way. I really am. Like, I, I think that's the way you just have to be in life. But I said, this has happened really fast. I'd actually like to just like, if this is going to happen, I want to ease into it. I don't want this to be all at once. And I said, let me see if I can stop this hair loss. That was my first goal. That should be everyone's first goal. And so I'm going to present, like I said, I'm going to create a huge post on everything that I did. The good news is this. In about three weeks to four weeks, it had completely stopped. and Now it's back to normal. So now my goal is to regrow any of that hair that I did lose. And we're talking about uh, thousands of hairs, mainly on the back of my head. And I'll do before and afters. Again, like I said, I'm dedicated to being honest uh, on this podcast. And if I'm not able to regrow it, uh, what I did loss, uh, what I did lose, um, you know, that is what it is. Uh, I believe that it will be because I believe it was induced by uh, this telogen effluvium, which is different than a DHT loss. But we'll see, right? We'll see. Um, but I'm certainly going to give it a go. And uh, I can tell you this, that no matter what, you want to stop the hair loss, right? That's the main thing. So what do you need to do? Well, you need to shift back in the antigen-based phase. So that's what I want to share with you, the last part. And then, like I said, I'm going to write a massive post on everything uh, that I've researched that I know and I believe is, is the best out there right now. 